Today, we hear the final words of Jesus, spoken from the time of his crucifixion. There is a tradition that the final words spoken have a heightened meaning, that they reflect the sum of the life's wisdom or our insight into what is most important to the person who is dying. In Jesus' case, no matter which gospel you prefer, his final words uphold that tradition. In this tradition, it is based around all four gospels. The final words come from all of them. It's a harmonization to help us hear these things. The words are more than a single word. The, <laughs> the word in Greek means statement or word. But traditionally, they're called the final words, the seven last words of Jesus. And so we use that to talk about the service today. At the end of the service, the bell will toll nine times, since Luke tells us that Jesus died at the ninth hour of the day, sometime around what we would call 3 p.m. It's based on the hours since sunrise, so it fluctuates based on the time of the year, not as much in the Holy Land since they're closer to the equator, but it gives us a general idea. This service is online for you to worship on your own schedule. But we remember the events of that Good Friday all those thousands of years ago. Let us worship God. Let us remember Jesus, who is God with us, living among us, healing the sick, teaching the good news of God's love, the companion and servant of all. May we be grateful always for who Jesus is and what he has done for us. Let us remember Jesus, who prayed for his enemies, forgave the oppressor, loved all people, and taught peace in a chaotic world. May we be grateful always for who Jesus is and what he does for us. Let us remember Jesus, who humbled himself even to death by crucifixion, God has lifted him up and through his sacrifice granted us atonement. May we be grateful always for who Jesus is and what he will do for us. Amen.
the first word, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Luke 23, verse 34. The first word is of forgiveness for actions that are not understood. Despite his pain, emotional and physical, Jesus asked for forgiveness, not for himself, but for those who were torturing him. Of all the final words, this is perhaps the most important to followers of Jesus, especially in the ancient world. When Christians would be arrested and executed in the arena, in many cases, they would follow Jesus's example and kneel in prayer of forgiveness for others. Though we often pray for others' health, it is more rare for us to pray for each other's forgiveness, and yet we ought to do so. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom Jesus prayed for forgiveness of ignorance, grant that we too may be included in this prayer. Whether we stray from you from ignorance or intention, call us back in mercy and grace, and accept us in your holy peace. In the name of Jesus Christ, our suffering Savior. Amen. The second word. Today you will be with me in paradise. Luke 23, verse 43. The second word is of salvation. Jesus at this point is already nailed on the cross. A brigand crucified next to him asks Jesus to remember him when Jesus enters the kingdom. At a time when most people would have utterly abandoned hope, this revolutionary brigand asks Jesus' help. Jesus responds that they will be together in paradise. Paradiso in Greek literally means garden of splendor. This is the only place in all the gospels that it appears. And I like to think that Jesus is trying to make the concept of heaven understood to someone who had no pre-existing knowledge of it. The garden of splendor awaits. Salvation is coming. And Jesus, even while crucified, tries to make its meaning understood. Let us pray. O Lord Jesus Christ, who promised to the repentant the joy of paradise, Enable us by the Holy Spirit to repent and to receive your grace in the world and in the world to come. Amen. The third word, dear woman, here is your son, here is your mother. John 19, verses 26 through 27. The third word is of relationship. Though most of the disciples have fled, men and women alike, there seem to be two that have remained with Jesus even at the end. One is his mother, the other the disciple that Jesus loved, usually taken to mean John. Jesus sees these two, who somehow have the strength to bear witness to his death, need each other's support. Both are likely already grieving, and Jesus knows that they will be strengthened by relational bonds. Mary may also need social support, an advocate, a friend to rely on in the patriarchal system of the day. 
John, it seems, has lost his mother and will need guidance going forward. Jesus sees this and reaches out from the cross to help reconnect two people in his life. Let us pray. O blessed Savior, who in your hours of greatest suffering expressed compassion for your mother and made arrangements for her care, grant that we who seek to follow your example may show our concern for the needs of others, reaching out to provide for those who suffer in our human family. Hear this, our prayer for your mercy's sake. Amen. The fourth word, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Matthew 27, verse 46. The fourth word is usually called abandonment, but I think it should be called misunderstanding. After all, he is misunderstood as calling out to Elijah. It's also one of two references to Psalms in Jesus' last words, being the opening lines of Psalm 22. This psalm also includes the line, My tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. My enemies surround me like a pack of dogs. They have pierced my hands and feet. They divide my garments among themselves and throw dice for my clothing. Clearly, this psalm is important to the events of that morning, but Psalm 22 makes another turn also. Here's a section from the end. God has not ignored or belittled the suffering of the needy. God has not turned God's back on them, but has listened to their cries for help. The poor will eat and be satisfied. Perhaps, perhaps, we mishear Jesus' words today. Jesus teaches us by his example that it is okay to cry out in the midst of suffering, even if we are misunderstood. When we are suffering, it is right for us to cry out for help from God and remember that God will have compassion on us. Let us pray. Almighty God, who let your Son hang upon the cross, showing the world your judgment upon human sin and guilt, grant us the grace to know and believe that we will never be forsaken that Jesus is present with us even to the end of the age. For the sake of Jesus Christ, who bore our sins on the cross. Amen. The fifth word, I am thirsty, John 19, verse 28. The fifth word is of distress. True thirst gnaws at you, making you seek any moisture you can find. Jesus, being truly human and truly God, is experiencing bodily distress. In John's gospel, the onlookers dip a sponge in cheap wine, and hook it into a hyssop branch, holding it up to Jesus' mouth for him to drink. Now, to John, this would have been ironic in the extreme. The living water is thirsty. The blood of the communion chalice is given the worst wine, and the one without sin is offered this drink on a hyssop branch, which was always associated with cleansing. Yet all of this together shows that Jesus had people around him with compassion who took mercy even on those in the process of being executed. Distress should always be followed with compassion. Let us pray. 
O blessed Savior, whose lips were dry and whose throat was parched, grant us the water of life that we who thirst after righteousness may find it quenched by your love and mercy, leading us to bring this same relief to others. Amen. The sixth word, it is finished, John 19, verse 30. The sixth word is of triumph. It is finished, it is fulfilled, it is completely all together. For someone who had previously begged God to take this cup away, to end this time of trial, finally it was completed. The early church saw this as obedience, that Jesus was obedient to God's will and that this was an expression of relief. But it's more than just a contract fulfilled. Jesus has brought union between God and humanity. Here is the moment of the defeat of death, even when it seems like death had the upper hand. As Adam Hamilton puts it, he had demonstrated both humanity's brokenness and God's love. He had offered himself fully to God as a sacrifice on the behalf of humanity. Let us pray. O Lord Jesus Christ, who finished the work that you were sent to do, enable us by your Holy Spirit to be faithful to our call. Grant us strength to bear our crosses and endure our sufferings even unto death. Enable us to live and love so faithfully that we also become good news to the world, joining your witness. O Christ, in whose name we pray, amen. The seventh word, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Luke 23, verse 46. The seventh word is of reunion. It is not a request like, God, please take my spirit, but a recognition and announcement of what God has already done. Father, I put my spirit into your hands. This is the other quote from the Psalms among Jesus' last words, from Psalm 31, verse 5. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Adonai, faithful God. In the end, it is Jesus' reunion with God that offers our hope for reunion with God, too. It is so beautiful to hear Jesus say these words that he had likely heard so often that they were engraved in his mind at our passing from this world into the paradise to come. I hope that what is engraved on our heart from constant use and repetition will be words of hope and reunion with God. Forgiveness, salvation, relationship, understanding, distress, triumph, reunion. May these final words of Jesus carry you through this Easter and the Easter to come. Amen.
holy and beloved God. Thank you for being with us in this wondering moment where we stand poised between life and death, filled to the brim with sorrow, filled with thoughts of what has been and what lies before us. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for our friend Jesus, who was a gift to the world, a gift in each of our lives. Comfort us, even as we are shaken by the horror of these last hours. Be our friend in this time of sorrow and sustain us in the days to come. Now, may God bless and keep you. May the very face of God shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God's presence embrace you and give you eternal peace. Amen.